Now, testicular cancer, very similar. So again, the later you catch it, the deadlier it is. So when it's still localized and contained within the testes, then this is this is still in the testicle and you have a 99% survival. So it's very rare that men who have localized t testicular cancer and early stage te testicular cancer die. But what if it starts to spread to the surgeon, like maybe the pelvic region or beyond the testes, but still in the lower abdomen? Well, the thing is, like, if it spreads to the lymph nodes, then it, the, it does get a little, it is a little more dangerous, but overall still good survival rates. Unfortunately, maybe 4% of men who have the testicular cancer spread to the surrounding inguinal lymph nodes, they might die, but still pretty survivable. But when it starts to spread throughout the body and distant locations like the lungs, the bones, or places where you can't even reach, well, that's when it starts to become deadlier. So this is when it's like, even though more men survive it than not, what we have here is that compared to that initial, like maybe 1% of men dying or 4% here, now more than a quarter are dying. So this is why it's important to catch cancer before it develops and starts to spread. So it's very treatable, and again, you want to you want cancer to meta what we call metastasis and metastasize throughout, and which is the medical term for just cancer spreading throughout the body. Okay, so t testicular cancer. What's the age most at risk of developing testicular cancer? In prostate cancer, we had men who are older than fifty-five plus, and even more, and the median age was sixty-seven. Well, the age that's highest at risk of testicular cancer are, are men between these ages, 20 to 34. So this is probably most of the men who are, are watching this stream right now. Or if you're not at this age yet, you'll eventually end up at that age. So this is where you should be more awareness, have increased awareness of this. And what you can do, and they advise doing in the shower, is a testicular self-exam. Basically, they want you to feel, okay, what's the normal texture of your testes? And just like with the prostate exam, in general, tumors feel a little harder and denser than the surrounding tissue. Now, there's many tutorials online, and it's actually fascinating. I was debating whether to include this clip. Now, it's really... I don't know if this would ever happen here in the United States, but in I guess in the UK, they actually had like the this rugby team go on this TV show and they had them like actually do a testicular self exam. I mean it was very clinical, so of course like, but yeah, these men, these rugby players, they drop trial and then there was a doctor instructing them on how to do a testicular self exam. One thing they always tell you with the testicular self exam is that you'll feel something in the behind of your test posterior of your testes. And they say, do not press that or mess around with it too much. And why is that? Well, that different mass is your epididymis. And again, the epididymis, very important in connecting your testes and conducting sperm and maturing sperm as it goes to the ductus deferens. So you don't want to damage your epididymis. And But what they want you to do is just like for men to do is just know their normal texture of their testes and when they do the self-exam if they feel a lump then they can maybe go to a doctor and see if they can get it checked out all right so more about testes and there's now let's talk about talk about a condition that's not cancer but it could result in an increased risk of testicular cancer and this is called cryptorchidism. And crypt sounds like a uh, crypt, like in a cemetery where it's like entombed in something. Well, it is kind of what happens. So what happens during testicular development and as you grow, uh, as a, and during maturation, is that these testes actually start out in the abdomen. And what happens during development is that these testes eventually descend and then they go through a, what we call the inguinal canal. Now, the thing is that as they go through the inguinal canal, they are supposed to end up in the scrotum. But sometimes nature doesn't always take its course, and one of these actually gets stuck in the inguinal canal, or they don't enter the canal. So they might end up stuck in the abdomen. So this is why some, some men, they might only have one testes in their scrotum. Does that mean the other testes is not there altogether? Well, there's always a chance that maybe one testes didn't develop, but 
maybe there's one that's actually stuck in the abdomen. Actually, I remember there was a, he didn't show me, but I remember like I, I was like in Boy Scout camp and one of the other scouts, he told me that he had like, I think the, he said the doctor pushed it. He actually had one and the, he, he claimed the doctor pushed it down in his abdomen through the canal. But the thing is that there was nothing really anchoring it there. And there's in the typical testicular anatomy, you have connective tissue that anchors and keeps the testes where they are. But I guess with nothing to keep it anchored back, he said it migrated back up into his abdomen. That's just the story he told me, but considering the anatomy and what happens in cryptorchidism, I guess I could believe it. But yeah, so one testicle might become stuck. This is why it's called cryptorchidism. Now, how does that relate to men's health and possible cancer? Well, the thing is that sometimes in the, this testicle that ends up here in the abdomen or stuck in the abdomen, it's more at risk of being, it, so yeah, if you, if you don't actually have it anchored. So the understand the testicles, well, there's an increased risk of cancer in the testicle that's in the abdomen. So that's why if, you, if someone does have this and they, they, might, they might think they only have one testes, but they actually have two testes, it's just one stuck in their abdomen, they might want to get checked out to make sure that it is, if the testes is not there or if it's actually undescended, that's what we call it when it's stuck up there. Because again, that testicle will have an increased risk of cancer. And there's another term, it's, in, it's very interesting, it's very rare, it's called polyorchidism. Now, if you remember your prefixes and root words, you might remember that poly refers to many of something, right? So orchid is referring to the testes, just like cryptorchidism. So what we have here is polyorchidism is also known as a supernumerary te testicle. Super meaning above, numeral referring to number. So you have an above number testicle. And remember, in typical male anatomy, you have two testes. So what's the additional number to that? Yeah, three testes. So that's what we have in polyorchidism. Extremely rare, only a few hundred reported cases in medical literature. Maybe there's a fourth testes, I, that would be even rarer. But yeah, in documented history, there's only been a few hundred cases of this. And I didn't want to put a picture because I want to like test YouTube's like guidelines, but I, I think this guy deleted his account. Yeah, he did. But if you want to find it, like go look at Reddit and look up this thread. And there's a picture, and I'm pretty sure if you're really curious what this looks like, and it looks pretty convincing, like, and surprisingly, that testicle, extra testicle looks like the same size as the other ones. So, I mean, yeah, it's pretty <laughs> interesting. But yeah, I'll, I usually sometimes show it in class, but I don't know if like YouTube would allow it. But if you're really curious, you can look it up. But the thing about polyorchidism is that they have an increased men who have polyorchidism, the very few men that have it, they have an increased cancer risk compared to men, that men who have two or, um, testes. I was going to say orchids. Okay, so what are other things that affect can testicular cancer risk? Well, age is a big one. So again, you know, all the college age men right now, they're at the big high risk zone. But again, does that mean you will develop testicular, testicular cancer or that men who are past 40 don't have a real risk of that. Not necessarily, it just means that that's where we see the most cases of this. Genetics also plays a, plays a role in this as well. And white men in the United States are more at four to five and five times as risk as black or Asian American men. And the interesting thing is not just genetics, but also geography as well. So what we see in general, in terms of worldwide statistics is that their highest risk of testicular cancer is in men from Amer in the American continent and European. And this is called talking about all ancestral backgrounds, not just like white, black, Asian American, Latino. Like that, because the interesting thing is that in continental Africa and Asia, so again, same background and an ancestry, but we actually see a lower rate of testicular cancer in continental Africa and Asia. So there's both genetics and environmental thing, factors that play in testicular cancer. But again, if you're male, then it doesn't hurt to do a check in the shower and you don't need to like spend a lot of time. You just should know 
okay, what's the normal tex texture of it? Because again, early detection is important for survival.